Welcome to another show of Celebrate Life. My name is Gary DeCarlis, and I'm your host. This happens to be uh, a pioneer me uh, show, actually. It's the first live show, and it's also the beginning of our third year. For those of you who have never seen Celebrate Life, the idea behind it is to celebrate the lives of Vermonters and other special people uh, while they're very much alive and in our community. Um, I've read too many obituaries leaving thinking, gosh, I wish I had met that person when they were alive. Well, this show, you're going to be able to do that. Um, and I'm of the strong belief that everyone has a story to tell. If you're interested in being a, uh, host, a, sh a guest on our show, please write me at celebratelife0747 at gmail.com. Or if you have a uh, question for our guest, again, uh, write me at celebratelife0747 at gmail.com. Today, I'm honored to have as our special guest, former mayor, Peter Clavel. Welcome, Peter. Gary, very nice to be with you. Good Thanks to have you the on the show. Thank you for the opportunity. You're more than welcome. So, nice um, to be here before you have to read my obituary. <laughs> That's, right. That's the idea. <laughs> so, um, you have a lot to celebrate in your life. You know, I was thinking on my way in, Gary, uh, I've had a very good life. It's been full. It's been interesting. I've had occasional challenges, but uh, hopefully I made a positive impact on the lives of others. And if I died today, I could go out saying, yep. I'm happy. Yep. It's been a good life. Good. Yeah. Well, we're going to unpack that life a little bit today. Um, where did it start, Peter? Started right up here on the hill. 74 years ago, born in the Gosbian Hospital, uh, second of five kids of a Winooski family. Mm. So, yeah. Wow. I haven't wandered too far. <laughs> well, I actually and have, we're, but, and we're glad. but I'm yes, back. Yes, you have it. <laughs> yes. So, what was life like early on? You know, I would say that uh, it, it wasn't always easy. Mm -hmm. You know, I was growing up in Winooski at a time when the city was suffering economically yep. and uh, my father and his brother uh, had a small grocery store uh, between them they had 11 kids so 15 people <laughs> a lot of people that trying care to be for. fed off a grocery store like yeah. my dad would say uh, we ate all the profits uh, he worked <laughs> he worked very hard uh, when I was about 10 years old uh, I, the grocery store shut down and okay. he entered another life and Ultimately, got a job at IBM, but he was a hardworking man. I, one, any one time, would, would have as many as uh, four jobs. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And you what? know, and, and my mom was uh, mostly stay-at-home. Five kids uh, kept her quite busy. Yeah. Yeah. Did uh, was the grocery store like a Kolodny's type of grocery store? Not nearly that big. Uh -huh. No. Yeah. Just a small. Okay. Uh, store uh, located on uh, East Al West Allen Street in Winooski, kind of where the city hall is now in yeah, Winooski. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they had a good selection of uh, meats, uh, hmm. largely a meat market, but it also was a place where folks primarily from the Democratic Party would, would gather to hmm. tell stories, strategize, drink beer, play cards uh, after closing hours. and. <laughs> So you were exposed to politics early on. Yes, yes, I was. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Was your father interested in politics himself? Uh, he was interested. Uh, yeah, his claim to fame in terms of public service was serving as the delinquent tax collector. Oh my goodness! For the city of Winooski, that's, that's a, a job which he held for more than forty years. Wow, uh, that's a dangerous job. Yeah, <laughs> his brother Bob served on the city council for some time. Huh. So yeah, they were they were definitely politically huh. engaged. And on my mother's side, uh, yeah, there's also was a, a trend of uh, political Politics, engagement. Right. I okay. re remember my uh, grandmother telling me that she was a a yellow dog Democrat. And I says, what does that mean, Mom? She <laughs> says, I would vote for a yellow dog before I vote for <laughs> a Republican. And I says, really? And uh, then I understood that uh, she had six kids. 
and mm -hmm. she was widowed. Uh, her her husband died when she was 39 years old. Wow. So she raised uh, wow. six kids as a as, as a single mom, and uh, it wasn't always easy. This was before the day when we had a substantial safety net, and so yep. she really appreciated the the programs that were mm. brought forth by FDR and. Right. Mm -hmm later administrations, but those right. were important to the survival and the well-being of oh. our family. What was, um, when you think back to those days you're, uh, as a young kid, what was a typical day after school like for you? You know, uh, it's, we had some woods, there, not many woods in, in left in Winooski, but back then there were a lot of woods and mm. uh, ponds and the Gilbrook and mm. we'd wander around there catching frogs, uh, just walking through the woods. Uh, later I would uh, be interested in hunting and fishing and during the summers we'd spend time at a place that's been in the family for 125 years now in Mallets Bay and uh, My goodness. big chunks of the summer were spent there. Yeah. Wow, nice. Yeah. Did you have any um, what I want to be when I grow up ideas? You know, that I hesitate to even mention this because it seems so far-fetched now, but at one time I thought I might be a priest. Yeah, okay, <laughs> okay that makes sense. Did and, you go to Catholic school? Uh, at, for high school yeah. and, and for college, but not yeah. for elementary school. I went to Winooski Public Schools. Uh, and then as a very young kid, probably 12 years old, I was uh, elected mayor for the day. No you kidding. Yeah, so. Is that right? <laughs> wow. Yeah. There you go. Huh. But I always had an interest in uh, geography and current events. And yeah. Yeah. Um, what were your grammar school years like? Did you, besides being mayor for a day? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was a... It was a uh, it was a good life. Uh, of course, back then we all would walk to school and mm. uh, for lunch break typically would sometimes go home but often go to one of my grandmothers. They were both living in Winooski at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and after school, you know, I, I enjoyed sports. I was never very good at it. Probably I was best at football, but I enjoyed yep. playing baseball, but I, I was yep. awful. I never could really throw the ball. Yep. Uh, but a lot of stick ball and uh, a lot of time just riding the bikes through the, 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 the streets of Winooski. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And it sounds like uh, with grandparents, uncles, your own family, you had a huge, huge ne family and, network. Right. And also, you know, just the neighborhood was very uh, strong. Uh, neighbor directly adjacent to us had 15 kids. Yep, yep. <laughs> Imagine. <Wow>. 15 <laughs> kids. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they, so you go to high school and you went to a Catholic high school. Was that yes. Uh, you know, many of us in Winooski at the time uh, opted to go to Rice High School. Mm -hmm. And that was a good experience. I enjoyed my years at Rice graduate of the class of 1967 and uh, yeah the good sisters of mercy uh, yeah. you know there are many late teachers at the time but the sisters of mercy at the time played a very important role we all we always had a, a tough uh, but com compassionate uh, principal it was a priest uh, Sparky Adams during my day uh, mm. and, uh, Father Ross and uh, yeah and so that the great traditions at Rice at the time was stunt night, and it continues to this oh. day, where each class would, in the fall, would organize uh, a performance. Uh, That's right. Uh, and was Ron Corey coordinator? Ron Corey was very much the coordinator of. Yeah. The, may he rest in peace. Ron yes. just passed away a couple of weeks ago. Yes. I just got a haircut yesterday, and I was uh, talking to mm. one of his former colleagues and. We were, was just telling her about the, the stunt night days. Yes. Yeah. He would always talk. I, I used to get my hair cut when I had some of the cut. <laughs> right. um, now it's mostly polished. <laughs> but, uh, but he would talk about stunt night as a very special thing for him. Yeah, and he well, just loved doing that. Yeah, yeah. it's a great memory. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, that's great. Now, when you went to Rice, you were, you, you were exposed to a broader section of 
kids. I mean, yeah. you're from Burlington, from outside of Burlington. Right. How, did that affect you in any way? Uh, I think it affected me because I, 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 I developed friendships with kids that I might not otherwise have had friendships with. Yeah. Uh, yep. And, um, you know, a number of those friends have, have passed away, unfortunately. It's hard. You know, sometimes it's difficult to believe how many of my close high school friends uh, have, mm -hmm. have, have passed away. But there mm -hmm. are many others that I continue to, to this day to be very, very good friends with. That's good. And uh, these are folks from uh, from Burlington. So, yep. you, you know, through the high school years, my network of friends grew exponentially. Yep. Uh, of course, they would always look at us as the, the river rats, we were called. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if any of them back then would have believed that this river rat would have crossed the city <laughs> to become the, the, the mayor. mayor of the city of Burlington. We'd <laughs> often joke about that. I yeah, bet. Yeah. Um, did you get involved in activities in Rice? The uh, things that you know, when I was at, at Rice, uh, I was still an altar boy. I participated in uh, CYO. Uh, uh, for a couple of years, I played football. Uh, I was on the hockey team, and wow. my wife jokes, to Betsy, uh, yeah. would say, y "You were on the hockey team." She <laughs> said, "You can't skate," and she's right. I could not skate. I was on my ankles all the time. You were the goalie? No, but I was kind of the hit man. You know, if there was somebody <laughs> on the other team that was misbehaving, they'd send me out to uh, take him Wipe out. Him out. <laughs> I ended up spending more time in the penalty box than I did on ice. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, and then you went to college. And I went to college. You know, I grew up just a few blocks from St. Michael's College. I always liked mm. St. Michael's. Mm. Uh, for me, it had a sense of comfort and yep. familiarity that I liked, but I didn't want to go to school in Winooski or Winooski Park. Uh, right. So I decided to apply to a school that was quite similar to, to uh, St. Michael's in, in Manchester, New Hampshire, St. Anselm College. Okay. Uh, also a Catholic college, but not run by the Edmonites, but by the Benedictines. I also had a cousin who was a, hmm. a Benedictine monk there, so that was a connection. And hmm. uh, for me, that was a good choice. Yeah, and what did you major in? You know, I went through a couple of majors initially, uh, political science, sociology, but I ended up being an urban studies major, which was a very wow. interesting uh, a program. Uh, and one of the few uh, colleges at the time that, that, that had such a program. And it was right. kind of a mix of, uh, you know, urban affairs, but there was a track that would, was focused more on city planning and another one focused mm. on city management. So mm. I had to decide, you know, I, I really enjoyed the, the content and the work, but I had to decide, okay, what's, what's for me? Is it city right. management or city planning? Right. And I decided I liked the city management track, so uh, I, uh, I applied to graduate school. Mm. And this is about the time when many of my friends were getting drafted to go to Vietnam, right. and but right. fortunately I was just at, at the tail end of that process, uh, yeah. so I was never drafted. I would have gone if I had been, but uh, I went to grad school, uh, Syracuse University, and okay. received a master's in public administration, and whoever knew that I'd have the opportunity to use it. My goodness. <laughs> That's the progression is beautiful. On well, how well then to, to 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 carry the story on, so it was a very intense. And Syracuse is is a well known program uh, in public administration, but it was an intense program. You went for a full year, uh, so it was like a twelve month program. Mm. For twelve months, you're done. Really? So so here I am at uh, twenty three years old, saying, "Okay, what am I going to do now?" So right. I started throwing a a uh, number of uh, CVs out there. I ended up getting a job at, in the uh, city of Winooski at the time it was the Model Cities program. Right. But simultaneously, I had sent out a few random applications for various jobs, including one for town manager's position in uh, Castleton, Vermont. Hmm. So I went to, to, to my <clears throat> surprise, this kid with no experience, 23 years old, I was invited wow. for an interview. 
I went down there, and uh, before the evening was over, I was offered a job, job being town manager at Ca in Castleton. Castleton. Wow. 23 years old. Wow. It was a great community. I really enjoyed my time there. I did that for for uh, four years. Uh, here's wow. this kid, you know, he's running the highway department, uh, raising, uh, raising, collecting taxes, and raising them as well. Uh, <laughs> overseeing a police department, a fire department. Wow, no kidding. It's a wonderful experience. Did you, anything special that stands out from those years? Uh, you know, I learned very, uh, very early on, uh, you know, I always wanted everybody to like me and to love me. Sure. Uh, but you learn in public service, as I'm sure you will attest to, that if you do the right <laughs> thing, not everybody's going to love you. Exactly. So I had to cross that hurdle. Mm. And, and, uh, it's a good lesson un learned. Understand that, uh, yeah, you know, it, you're not always going to be loved by everybody. Exactly. I also uh, discovered that uh, in public service, you need. You need to put yourself out there, and that wasn't naturally me. I'm sure some people will find this hard to believe, but mm. I'm, you know, beneath the facade of a politician. I'm I'm a kind of shy and mm -hmm. introverted guy, and I need to I need to work at uh, putting myself, putting yourself out, there. out there. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah. Great grounds to do it in, though. Nice little town in yeah. Vermont. Um, Wow. And then after doing that for about four years, I uh, w was encouraged to apply to be the city manager in Winooski, which I did. Wow. And so 1976 now, I went to work for the city of Winooski. And that was a challenging job for me, uh, you know, a local boy uh, yeah. going home and Winooski was in a period of great transition at that time. Uh, you know, some of the local leaders were fairly conservative and set in their ways, mm -hmm. and Winooski was in a period of great change. Uh, you know, the urban renewal yep. uh, properties had had been demolished, and we had this large vacant uh, piece of property. Uh, uh, just off of Main Street, and uh, it was an mm. interesting time. On one hand, we were getting uh, millions of dollars uh, in federal grants uh, per capita. The city was receiving more federal money than yep. virtually anybody in the country. Uh, but on the other hand, the, the bread and butter of municipal services, your basic services, they had to be supported by, 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 by taxes, by right. property taxes, and some in the community weren't particularly eager to mm. pay their fair share or to increase property taxes, and mm. so. So you had a little the old school, new school going yeah, on, and exactly. here you are in the middle. And here I am in the middle, trying to and, negotiate yeah. both of those. Yeah, you know, and again, I was still a young guy. Still, right. You know, I was like 27 years old when I started that right. job. Uh, wow. Did you would. Did Burlington serve as uh, anything you can learn from? Well, because it was going through changes. Sure, as well. Burlington was going through changes, but we also at the time recognized that uh, there were many issues uh, that would cross the uh, the border between Winooski and Burlington, and right. sometimes would find ways to cooperate. I remember a discussion concerning regional dispatching. Other times there was tension. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Burlington at one time wanted to dam up the city above Champlain Mill and or dam the river above Champlain Mill huh. and you would have had a dry riverbed. We said, no, 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 that's that's not a good idea. Right. And wow. we, we also had great debates concerning the the wood chip plant. Uh, our yeah. concern was all this truck traffic uh, right. going through the city. Uh, I n never realized it'd be on the other side of the river shortly thereafter. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at these problems from a different perspective. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So then at some point you did jump over the river. At, at some point, uh, there was a point when I resigned as uh, city manager of Winooski. Uh, I had a period uh, where, you know, after being city manager in Winooski, I was a bartender in Winooski. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, 
<laughs> Canal Street Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, uh, was that a tough time for you, Peter? Go it was a tough time because also during this time I was going through a divorce. I, yeah. My first marriage was seven years and uh, it was uh, yeah. a tough time, you know. Who am I, uh, you know, yeah. in personal life and relationships? Uh, yeah. It was difficult. And you're a public figure too, so a lot of that's uh, well, yeah, yeah, accentuated. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then, then I had a brief stint in state government and worked a couple of years for an engineering firm uh, where hmm. my work was focused on municipalities, supporting municipalities, building. Hmm infrastructure projects but then lo and behold this guy was elected in Burlington a guy named Bernie Sanders Sanders, and yes. Bernie Sanders <laughs> and, uh, you know I was not involved in his initial election but shortly after he was elected I, I met him mm -hmm. and uh, he asked if, if 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 I would help in certain areas because uh, you, you recall at the time yep. uh, he's mayor but the Nobody. board of aldermen exactly. did not allow him to form an administration right. so uh, a lot of the work was being done by various task force and committees exactly. and uh, I was You're became the, the very radical idea of uh, controlling costs and Bernie Sanders idea we need to do a better job of controlling costs huh. and he created a cost control committee that came up with some radical notions such as putting insurance contracts out to bid. <laughs> uh, yeah. and, and then uh, radical. I also remember in the early years I was, I was then living on uh, South Willard Street with Betsy and we would build the city's budget uh, around our dining room table. Uh, you know, a bunch of us would wow. get together and uh, develop the budget. Amazing. Yeah, yep. it, was, it was like a shadow government in the beginning, wasn't it? In the it? beginning, yeah. it was. Yeah. And one of the, f not the first, but one of the first Bernie uh, opportunities Bernie had to uh, appoint a department head was when the then personnel director resigned. So mm. uh, he didn't have to remove somebody from office, but there was a vacancy that right. he could fill. Right. And he appointed me to fill that uh, okay. position. Uh, huh. which was interesting uh, and so I was personnel director and you know looking at the overall management of government and one thing that became real clear was they had this mayor with all with this grand vision for the city and all these ideas but no capacity to implement them yeah yeah so one of the the propositions that we began to develop early on in my time with Burlington was to create a community an economic development office oh, uh, okay. that, that, that would focus on <clears throat> some of the key issues of facing the city, hmm. attracting investment, creating jobs, making certain that downtown was vibrant, yeah. uh, dealing with, with housing, with a particular focus on affordable housing, developing the waterfront, involving uh, citizens in decision making. So all this became part of the uh, mission of CEDO. Right. And lo and behold, after a nationwide <laughs> search, and this was legitimate, uh, yep. I said, I'd rather do this <clears throat> than be personnel director. So I applied for the CEDO position. I was appointed, Perfect. and I did that for about seven years. Wow. And that's when I met you and worked with you uh, being yeah. a city councilor. Right. Yeah. Remember wow. One of our big projects back then was the revitalization of North Street. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But so, I, yep. That's it. <laughs> so, wow, that's a lot right there. Yeah. Um, so all those jobs, Castleton, Winooski, um, helped build that intellectual um, capital to be able to pull off CEDO. Yeah. I mean, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. Bernie was smart to hire yeah. you. Yeah. And that was a great job. And. Uh, Great staff you had? We had a great staff. Uh, we were bringing in a lot of federal money. Uh, we operated for many years without any direct uh, taxpayer That's support. Right. Uh, we kind of lived off what we were able to catch. In, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it, you wow. bring in the money and you create some revenue streams and you could grow and prosper.
Yep. And we made great progress in terms of revitalizing the waterfront, uh, creating the community boathouse, exactly. you know, the bike path, uh, bringing a department store downtown, All right. uh, dealing with neighborhood issues, uh, yeah, creating neighborhood planning assemblies. Is, uh, what, th what stands out in those years in your leadership role for you? That what was the most rewarding part of all that? those seven years yeah you know for me when I look at my time with the city of Burlington which was a total of 25 years right you know seven terms yeah. 15 years as mayor and my time in in CETO is a little less than 20, 25 years but what was I think of okay my major accomplishments one is place and that's the waterfront revitalizing the waterfront mm. and again this was both mm. in situ but I continued yes. as, as, as mayor on that path in terms of policies I think the work that we did around uh, affordable housing uh, mm -hmm. creating the land trusts and yes. developing policies in the city that would protect the most vulnerable and uh, yes. you know we used to you know as preserve the stock of affordable housing we had right. produce more, protect the vulnerable, and you know, yep. uh, the ultimately inclusionary zoning and the housing trust fund. And thirdly, yeah. was just the process and of of get of people being engaged in yeah. decision making. Uh, yep. I've always said that in Burlington, democracy it sometimes looks a little messy. It it's because it is and mm -hmm. uh, when people are engaged yeah absolutely you know you have to find compromise you have to reach agreement on some tough exactly. issues sometime and in Burlington local government and politics was uh, was not a spectator sport everybody was on the field <laughs> and, yeah I wonder how many people benefited from that engagement process that actually changed their life in in their own careers yeah because I, of it you know I think many 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 yeah. many yeah. yeah I would think yeah good work yeah what did you learn from Bernie you know I, so as we've as we've talked uh, my career prior to joining the administration of Burlington was mostly around management mm -hmm. and what I learned from Bernie is that yeah management is important but it can't simply be management. Mm. You need to be bold. Mm. You need to be introducing and implementing uh, ideas, mm. uh, programs, practices, policies that will make government work for ordinary people. Mm. So I learned to blend uh, kind of a yes. radical approach uh, that, that supported an activist city government with good management. Yes, right. And so. Both are important too. Both are One important. One without the other. So, I, yeah. so you know, I I'd mm. like to think that I continue to be a good manager, yeah. but also uh, became more uh, out there in terms of advancing new progressive ideas yes. to make government work for all of us. Yes, I think you did a great job. Yes. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I I think many people would have would say that you could have been a mayor for life if you wanted to be. Yeah, uh, you you chose to leave it. Well, fifteen years is a long time. It Sometimes it felt for life. It felt like it was Takes for its life. Toll, I'm sure. You, you remember that uh, even during that period, I wasn't always mayor. Uh, after serving for two terms, uh, to the surprise of many in the community, I think myself included, I lost an election in 1993. That's right. Yeah. And at that time, I said, ah, forget it. I'm done with Burlington. I'm done with politics. Mm. Uh, I said to my family, we're, we're moving. Uh, need to do something different with my life. Mm. Uh, so we packed up our bags, and without having a job, we moved to the Caribbean island of Grenada. Well, that's what uh, I about yeah, that. That's so, right. Uh, <clears throat> wow. We lived there for a full year. That was the plan, not to live, not to move forever, but to live somewhere mm -hmm. for a full year. And the idea of living in the tropics was something wow. that had great appeal to us. And it was a wonderful experience, uh, both uh, uh, for the kids, but for Betsy and I. I mean, living in a society where the white folks constituted maybe two or three percent of the population, mm -hmm. 
uh, you know, I kind of went there to escape politics. I hadn't been there but a couple of weeks and became involved in politics, uh, supporting <laughs> uh, a guy in a party that was running for office at oh, the wow. time. Became very much involved in that. Did some volunteer work in the nonprofit sector. Had my first assignment in international development was from Grenada, where I actually, uh, the, the family stayed behind, and I went to work in the Gaza Strip for a month on a wow. USAID-funded local governance project. Wow. So it kind of wet my appetite mm -hmm. uh, for <coughs> international development and world affairs, but it also get me in tune with with uh, the concept of sustainability is living on an island you see what's sustainable and <clears throat> what's not right and so after much reflection i decided that you know i don't quite have burlington out of my system and i can't think of anything that i'd rather do than be mayor of the city of burlington mm. so i began to think about mm. running for re-election while i was in grenada and then when we returned it was still uh, a year before the next mayoral election, yep. but began to build a creative platform and uh, build a base of support, and ran again in 1995 and was was reelected. And uh, but wow. one of the key themes that I took into office in '95 was sustainability, hmm. and I want to work to make Burlington. A sustainable community. A sustainable community. And, you know, it took me a while to get my head around that, but, but, but it really hit me when I said, you know, it's not all that complicated. We just need to make certain that everything that we do, every policy that we support, every project that we built, makes this a better place for our kids and grandkids, other people's kids and grandkids, than it is for us. Mm. And if we can't push it through that filter, then forget it. Right. Uh, we shouldn't do it. Right. And I also learned huh. in sus around sustainability that uh, uh, building a, a sustainable community, all four legs need to be strong. It's like a table, and the four legs are, yes, economic development and environmental protection. We've been talking about that for a long time. Yes, education, which also included engagement. But the, the fourth leg, which often was the shakiest, is equity. Mm. You know, how are decisions made, how are resources being shared, how are the marginalized being engaged. And yep. uh, so, you know, on my second time around as mayor, uh, there was a lot of focus on equity. How did you do it? Tell me some of the ways you actualized that. Well, again, in terms of decision making, making certain that all voices were we're, we're being heard. Mm -hmm. In terms of housing, making certain that the housing that was being built in the city was not just at, uh, for folks that had a pocket full of money, but uh, the yeah. folks with low and moderate incomes could afford a house. And I know that this continues to be a huge challenge in the city of Burlington, but it'd be a lot worse if some yeah. of the policies were not in place, such as inclusionary zoning, such as the condominium conversion ordinance, such as the creation of the of the housing trust fund. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. also in Burlington, some people sometimes forget that, uh, you know, the city worked real hard to make certain that the resources were in place, and many of these were federal resources, that would make housing affordable to low-income people by pegging the rent that they pay to the income that they earn. Right. And to this day, I think approximately 25% right. of all the rental units in the city of Burlington are uh, uh, subsidized oh, wow. and you're paying rent based upon your income. Wow. But also dealing with issues such as taxation and putting in place alternatives to the property tax, mm -hmm. uh, creating a waterfront that uh, was accessible to all. Yep. So just a few examples. Yeah, well, that's great. Yeah. So I know you have a, an amazing wife, Betsy. Yeah. How has she helped you in all this? She supported me. Uh, all the way, uh, but she's also had her own life as a, mm -hmm. as a, in public education as a guidance counselor and later as an executive director of a nonprofit organization in Burlington, Mercy Connections. Yeah, yeah, and uh, but she also, you know, uh, while I was mayor, the one regret that I have is that it takes a lot of time and energy 
and a lot of that is away yeah. from, from the from the family. Yeah. And you yeah. know, I would have if I had to do over again, I'd do a better job of balancing the work life mm. dynamic. It's a tough one. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, I try to get home at least have dinner with the kids, but so many nights I'd be off for, for another uh, meeting or, you yeah. know, sometimes I could have said, no, I can't go out tonight. And I should have right. probably said no more right. more often, but you're trying to yeah, and be connected with the community and right. uh, be visible and accessible. So it's, it's a difficult trade-off. And that's where Betsy stepped up and, uh, 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 and so, supported me but also took care of the family took care of the family and uh, you know not only our own family but we were for a very short period of time empty empty nesters and uh, a young boy that I had mentored because as mayor I was advocating for a mentoring program mm -hmm. and you know connecting particularly men with with young boys particularly that did not have a father figure in their life mm. and I said you know if I'm going to be out there trying to pitch mentoring as an approach uh, for those that say I don't have the time I don't have the energy right. I need to have a, men a mentee so yep. I had yep. a mentee and uh, the second mentee that I had was a young man who came to Burlington uh, without an immediate family uh, he's from Somalia, raised in a refugee camp in Kenya, mm. and lo and behold, uh, he'd been here for about a year, and he needed a place to stay. So wow. we we took him in, treated him as our own, and uh, he lived with us, and we raised him and wow. brought him through those challenging middle and high school days, and. Uh, he graduated from high school. He's doing well now. He's got three kids of his own. No kidding. Uh, so, yeah. Does he live in Burlington? He lives in Burlington. He lives in Burlington. Yeah, yeah. So that 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 was uh, great. Oh, that's wonderful. But then after being mayor, you know, one of the reasons I left the mayor's office is, is you know, as you know, Burlington had its own municipal foreign policy, which oftentimes yes. looked different than our country's <laughs> foreign policy. Right. We had an array of sister city programs. I had been involved in a nonprofit organization many years on the board of the Institute for Sustainable Communities. Mm -hmm. And I said, I really want to do this work. Hmm. And so I left the mayor's office in 2006 and I immediately joined uh, an international development consulting firm that happened to be based in Burlington. At the time it was led by a guy named George Burrell. That's right. And uh, so I joined them and uh, I had a very satisfying career with them, which included working in some very fascinating places. Uh, you know, some of the countries. Most, most of my work was working with uh, local governments or sometimes with central governments that were interested in strengthening mm -hmm. local governance. And this was particularly important in the former communist countries, but I've worked in some interesting places. Uh, you know, Jordan, Uganda, I visited on a frequent occasion. Uh, I spent three, four months once uh, starting off a large project in Afghanistan. Wow. Yeah. And then my last major gig was uh, living and working in the fascinating country of Albania for four and a half years. Wow. I was the the manager of a of a project that I like to think was quite successful, strengthening okay. local governance in, That's in Albania. Fantastic. Yeah, well. I still dabble a little bit uh, in that work. Uh, hmm. Mostly retired, but uh, on occasion I'll. Uh, participate in developing a proposal or mm. implementing a project and I'm also very involved in an orga organization called the VCWA, the Vermont Council on World Affairs and oh, yes. uh, right. I'm the chair of the board of that organization so that yeah. keeps your finger in there. Keeps my finger in international affairs. Is there um, anything left that you haven't done that you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> You know, there's a big world out there. It is a big world. And I'm very curious as to other people, about other people, and mm -hmm. I want to continue to, to, to grow and uh, uh, develop my understanding of uh, the world's problems and challenges and maybe make a modest contribution. But That's great, Peter. more than working, I'm interested in traveling. And, you know, since uh, 
uh, retiring from full-time work. We spend most of January and February just going to in interesting places and right. escaping from out winter. And we've been in South Africa, Seychelles. Uh, this past year, we spent a couple months in New Zealand, beautiful country, mm. uh, on the Polynesian island of, I used to call it Samoa, but now I know it's Samoa. Hmm. Uh, and also exploring the United States, the, the Southwest, uh, uh, and the civil rights sites in the South, uh, wow. Cajun country. So it's going to continue to do that. Have Morocco on my horizons for next year. Good for you. Do you do any writing about all of your life experiences? No, I sometimes think that maybe I, I should, but I haven't done that yeah. yet. And one of the problems is, is that I really can't type or process words very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but I might find a way to do that, yeah. <laughs> how about your kids, and how are they doing? Kids are doing great, yeah. And uh, I'm very appreciative of the fact that uh, most of my family, my African son, but my two biological boys, uh, they all live in Burlington. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, yeah. And, um, one one son is a very Luke is a very successful yeah. uh, realtor. Yeah. Uh, my son Will uh, followed in the old man's footsteps. He works for the city of Burlington in economic development. Wow! Uh, no yeah. kidding. Yeah, he's doing Beautiful. he's doing good work. Very good work. And my daughter Jay, who we adopted when yeah. she was just, I don't know four months old, she was born in Korea. Uh, we. She visits quite often, but she lives in Providence, Ro Rhode Island. She's okay. married to a Providence firefighter. Wow. Uh, and she's a world traveler. I mean, she she's constantly traveling. Uh, so that spirit of adventure and travel was yep. passed on to the to to the kids. It's, uh, <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, we're getting close to the end of our time together. Any words of wisdom or any? things, uh, quotes or special thoughts that you used in your career that you could pass on to other people? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think it's a, what's the Nike slogan? Uh, just, do know, it, right? just do it. Yeah. Go for it. Go for you it. know, don't hesitate. Take risk. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, that's if, if that's one thing, and you know, you can always make a, an adjustment going forward, but don't hesitate to, to mm. do something because it's a, a, bit, a bit risky. And, That's right. And, you know, be yourself and stand up for what you, what you believe in, even though it might not be popular. Yep. Mainstream. Those are great, great words, yeah. Peter. Absolutely. Any awards that you've gotten over the years that you're especially proud of? You know... Being elected mayor of Burlington on seven occasions is <laughs> pretty special. <laughs> that's, that's special. I, that that'll special. go down. That is special. But I, I need to say, I hasn't always been. You know, I haven't always won. If I was a baseball team, I'd have a pretty good record, but I did lose that one time in yep. mayor's race. And yep. I ran for governor once and uh, did not do as well as I'd hoped I might uh, in, in that race in 2004. Yep. Uh, but I never hesitated. Or I never looked back and said, oh, that's a crazy thing to do. I mean, it was a bit of a fool's error in running against a one-term in incumbent. Uh, an incumbent's only been defeated once in Vermont's yeah. history. Yeah. But uh, no regrets. Good. You yeah. put it out there. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Peter. Thank it's you, been Gary. great having you here. Good to see you. Good thank day. you. Yes.